you know, I want more companies to compete uh, in this space. Um, I think it pushes um, the industry forward. I want more capital to come to the space, not just capital for us. Um, you know, the, the meat industry is over a trillion dollars and more animals are being killed today than they were yesterday. More trees are being mowed down today than they were yesterday. We, we just need more companies in it. We need more competition. We need more products. We, we need more energy. Uh, in it, so um, I'm uh, I'm encouraged when I see more companies in and raising capital, not uh, not bothered by it. But keto, non keto, vegan, what anywhere in between, most people can agree that ingesting saturated fat and dietary cholesterol increases the probability that one will get cardiovascular disease. You can be vegan and absolutely give yourself cardiovascular disease if you consume a lot of saturated fat. Hi there, and welcome to Plant CEO. In today's episode, I'd like to welcome back my guest, Josh Tetrick, the co-founder and CEO of Eat Just. Hey, Josh, how are you doing? Good. Good to be back with you. Yeah, so happy that you've come back on, and you're no longer in Kauai. You're back on the West Coast, right, in San Francisco? Back on the West Coast, yeah. I'm uh, now in uh, an area called Stinson Beach, um, there are two lagoons here, um, and one of them has leopard sharks, and the other has seals. So not in Kauai, but still, uh, still next to the wildlife where I like it. Very nice. Have you done anything like feeding seals, like baby seals who are maybe orphans? Because I think that's that's a thing, isn't it? No, I haven't done that. But I've been uh, kayaking around the lagoon with my dog and just hanging out with seals uh, while I'm in the kayak. Sounds fun. I'd like to join you one day. It'd be quite awesome. Yeah, definitely. So let's start with some good news on the European front. So the European Food Safety Authority has just approved your key ingredient, which is the mung bean protein. Um, so which I thought they would have already have that sort of approved, it being part of mung beans in general. Did they have to sort of do that separately in order for you to launch here? Well, so they, uh, the way that the novel food process works is if the food at issue hasn't been sold before 1997, um, technically it's considered novel food and you have to go through the application process. Um, and there was one way of looking at it where mung bean protein has been sold before 1997 because people were eating mung beans before 1997. Uh, yeah. They approach it in a different way, which is say it's separated from the fat and the fiber of the starch. So therefore, there needs to be an assessment. So they, they went through that assessment process. Um, and uh, just like was the case in the U.S. and elsewhere, determined that it's safe for human consumption. We've been eating mung beans, after all, for um, many, many thousands of years Um the first mung beans we think were uh, cultivated in India about 4,000 years ago. So we weren't surprised to hear that uh, eating the protein portion uh, is safe, but uh, it uh, now clears the path for us to launch in Europe next year. So that's great. So next year, uh, which key countries do you see launching first and how soon into next year? So we're doing it in partnership with the company called PHW. Um, our plan is just sometime before the end of next year. It's hard to predict in, in a COVID world, but before the end of next year. Uh, so we'd like to launch um, in the, the main um, countries in Western Europe from Netherlands, uh, France, uh, UK, Norway, Denmark, um, pretty much all of them. Um, and you know, we think uh, just like in the United States and Korea and China and Canada and Singapore, where we are today, um, people tend to want to eat a little bit better for breakfast. And if we can convince people that an egg from a plant is a little bit better for them, they'll eat it. So that's our, our European plan isn't too different from our plan everywhere else. Sounds good. Thinking about the breakfast side, you've also just recently announced that you've done a deal with Aloft Hotels, a, a large chain owned by Marriott Hotels in the US, and that's 150 outlets that they have. And that will be placed together with the Beyond Meat sausage patty that they'll start to offer for breakfast. First of all, congratulations on that. I think it's great to be in a, in a big chain like that. And do you see this as the next evolution for you also going into these hotel chains? And I know you're already in fast food already, but hotel is something different for you at the moment, right? You know, it's really more into 95% of our business now is retail. So I think Whole Foods, Walmart, Safeway, ShopRite, 
um, in North America and elsewhere. And we really want to get more into food service and not just hotels, but stadiums and colleges and universities, um, cafes, bodegas in New York City. And we just launched a, a breakfast wrap in bodegas to commemorate uh, Mayor Adams's uh, win oh, awesome. uh, in, uh, in New York. So yeah. um, we started off in retail because for a lot of people, um, an egg from a plant is much um, is a newer thing than plant-based milks or even plant-based meats, both of which have been around. Plant-based milk uh, originated about 3,300 years ago in China. Plant-based meat um, has been around for many decades uh, in the United States. Uh, but a plant-based egg that scrambles in a pan is a new deal. So um, we've got to educate people. And we felt like retail was the best place to start that. Um, but now a big push into food service uh, and the, the partnership with the Loft is a good example of that. Yeah, I quite like when you also mentioned about stadiums because, you know, there is a drive for stadiums to become more sustainable. And if you look at also the rise of like here in the UK, like footballers uh, on a plant-based diet, but also clubs, there's a club here called Forest Green Rovers, they're completely vegan club. So that's quite nice, you know, to, to also cater for the fans who are, you know, growing in the community of also being plant-based or just want to eat healthier and, and mm. if they're flexitarians, for example. So that's quite cool. And have you already started those discussions with, with those sort of stadiums in mind? Uh, yeah, yeah, you, we're in talks with uh, both individual stadiums and also um, large organizations that supply the food to lots of lots of different stadiums. So yeah, that's uh, that's an important part of it. That's awesome. Uh, so I hope that goes well as well. Yeah. Moving on to good meat. So you've actually created, and it would be good to know what stage you are at now. But the first, you know cultured meat facility in MENA, so Middle East and North Africa. And that was on the back of, you know, obviously your investors, Doha and Venture Capital helped with that process. And, and where is that production facility currently at in terms of the stage of actually outputting cultured meat? Yeah. So just as a refresher for everyone, we were the first company to receive regulatory approval to sell cultivated cultured meat. Then we went on to sell it in Singapore starting December 20th of last year. Uh, we've been selling it since. So hundreds of people have sat down and eaten slaughter for meat for the first time. Um, more people will do it this week. More people will do it next week. More people will do it the following week. So we ain't stopping. It just continues to, to, uh, to roll. And we want to build out our production capacity. So we're building a facility in Singapore, the US and in Qatar. Uh, we haven't broken ground on the facility in Qatar yet. Uh, we'd like to do that sometime before the first half of next year. Uh, but that'll be one of our, our major facilities that are that's producing uh, meat for regions that end up consuming a lot of meat. Yeah. So, and you have broken ground in U.S. and in Asia, in Singapore. So we're, so we're producing in Singapore today yeah. at a facility and also producing in the U.S. We're building out larger facilities in, uh, in both countries. Um, really the key to, uh, to making this meet a reality is to make it at very large scale. So today our largest scale is about 1200 liter scale, which is relatively small. We want to move to 250,000 liter scale, which is large. And that'll allow us to produce a minimum of 15 million pounds per location, uh, meat per location. And that's what we want to do uh, in all the regions that we're in. Okay, so that 15 million pounds does sound a lot larger. So um, the what I'm comparing it against is, you know, Upside Foods who have just launched their facility, which cost them in the region of $50 million to produce. And currently, I think their production is about 50,000 pounds with a future annual capacity of 400,000. So just to get your figures right again. So, so our goal with the larger facilities is to do a minimum of 15 million pounds per 50 location. Million. Right, okay. Uh, and 15 million will really allow you to um, have the kind of distribution that we have with Just Egg today. So to be able to sell major retailers, to be able to sell the big fast food chains, you, you really need that capacity to sell to millions of people. Um, so that's where that's where our, our focus is. Yeah, so I think... That is a big challenge, right? So if you 
if we just take the American, the average uh, American and how much meat they consume. Uh, so I did, I did some calculations if this is correct. So if we're looking yeah. at about um, 274 pounds of, of meat being consumed by the average American every year, mm-hmm. um, which is up by the way, 40% since uh, the 1960s. And obviously that's still projected to grow. Then if we looking at that number and the population of around 330 million people in America, then there's 82 billion pounds weight wise of meat in kilos that you're looking at about 37 billion. So we need so many more companies like yourself or more companies like yourself to scale up even quicker. Um, and in order to do that, and you know what it's like, you know, raising money, raising capital, getting these production facilities everywhere in order to even make a dent on that number. Am I kind of, am I kind of right in that assumption that we need so much more coming into this uh, industry? It it can be a combination of um, what you want is capacity. Now, number of companies could be a proxy for capacity. Right. um, Or a smaller number of companies doing more, right? That, but you need a more capacity yeah Uh, but you're right in that even 15 million pounds is just a maybe i'll give you an example on the egg side so we've sold the equivalent we're approaching 200 million eggs sold we haven't hit it quite yet we're right we're almost there there are two trillion eggs laid every year two trillion Hmm. Uh, and we can do tens of millions of dollars of sales but we can still be way way short of 2 trillion. So whether it's us or us in combination with more companies who are building real capacity to solve for it, that's what's necessary. Otherwise you are like two things are true. You are a having an impact, um, but at the scale necessary to really solve the problem, it's relatively small. Mm. Uh, Where would you say, I mean, we we know about the opportunities obviously in the space and and that it, it needs to be disrupted and, um, for all things to do with health and sustainability. Where else are you seeing the challenges? Obviously, scale is a, is a big one and to execute on the investment. But what else, like, is there anything technical at the moment that you're seeing more of a challenge as you're going through, like, the R&D process? Is it to do with texture? Is it to do with the structure? Is it to do with the fats? Where would you sort of... Yeah. The big, the biggest issue by far is scale. I mean, right now, folks in Singapore think our think our chicken tastes like chicken. Um, we you, we yeah. can always make it better, but right now it works for people, you know. So far and away, the biggest issue for us is making not a little bit more, but a whole lot more. Again, tens of millions of pounds of it. Uh, and there are a lot of engineering challenges and scaling from a 1200 liter uh, facility to a many hundreds of, mil- not not hundreds to two and a half million liter size, uh, uh, two and a half million liters of um, capacity. They relate to how do the cells operate at a much larger scale? What are the physics of the, of the vessel as you continue to scale up? And um, the real engineering challenges that we need to we need to solve for. They're not certain. We feel like we have a good handle on how to solve for it, uh, but that's far and away the biggest challenge. More than regulatory, more than consumer perception, more than all that. Can we make more at a low cost? If we can, we think we got this. If we can't, well, this will have been, um, you know, a whole lot of work without any real impact, which yeah. we we, uh, we have some of wood. Then is the route also to go with hybrid products? In the interim, obviously. Um, so our, I guess it, it, you know, it depends what you mean by hybrid. So Tyson chicken nuggets, I'll use them as an example. If you went and bought a pack of Tyson chicken nuggets at Walmart today, you think of them as chicken nuggets. 10, 15% are plant-based. It's, it's binding, it's the fiber. That's so yeah, I guess if you think if you think of that as a hybrid product, then the answer is yes. Yeah. And initially it will be like that. Um, and then it'll eventually be a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Once the scale is there. Yeah. 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 So I guess you could see hybrid products as being a mixture between, you know, actual meat and cell-based meat and then cell-based meat and uh, um, plant-based uh, alternatives. Right? Yeah. yeah it and, and a mixture I mean, between all of those. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. I think our focus would be like right now, our chicken in Singapore is 70 plus percent chicken and then the rest plant. 
But when a human being consumes it, they're they're consuming it as chicken in the same way that if you ate that Tyson chicken nugget, you're consuming it as chicken. You're not like, well, you know, okay, there's a little bit of fiber in here. You're, you know, in your brain, it's chicken. And the same kind of deal in Singapore. So our focus would be either 100% animal, um, cultivated animal cells, or, um, you know, 70 plus percent cultivated animals in the rest plant. In terms of other companies, you know, your, your peer companies, do you think are doing a good job in a similar way that you guys are, are, are doing? You know, I already mentioned Upside there and, you know, it'd be great to hear your thoughts on them, but also the other cultivated meat companies and, and the sectors that they're working on or the types of meats yeah. they're trying to replace. You know, m- most of my information, honestly, is just through the media. So I'm not um, sort of not, uh, you know, uh, I don't have sort of the 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 real DL on what's going on, but um, you know I want more companies to compete uh, in this space. Um, I think it pushes um, the industry forward. I want more capital to come to the space, not just capital for us. Um, you know the the meat industry is over a trillion dollars, and more animals are being killed today than they were yesterday. More trees are being mowed down today than they were yesterday. We just need more companies in it. We need more competition. We need more products. We we need more energy uh, in it. So um, I'm uh, I'm encouraged when I see more companies in and raising capital, not uh, not bothered by it. Yeah. And how do you think that we can get more investors, especially sort of institutional investors, to invest more uh, into this area? The, the the biggest reason, same deal with the electric car, is companies that are in the space need to win. So when, when we receive regulatory approval to sell in Singapore and then go to sell and then we raise a big capital raise, that helps other companies too. And then likewise, when other companies do it, it will help us. So it, winning is the best way to get more capital in because an investor wants to get a return on their capital. So the reason uh, Rivian, the electric truck company, um, has a bigger... Um, market capitalization today than Ford, if you can yeah. believe it. And we're, we're looking at 110 billion already, right? Uh, is because, and they've sold less than 100 cars, is because um, investors look at a pretty good um, comparison in Tesla and they see what Tesla has been able to do winning again. It wasn't easy for Tesla in the beginning. They had to prove it out as the first mover in the space, um, but it makes it a little bit easier because the case becomes proven a little bit more that consumers want an electric car. The case will become, you know, stronger that consumers want real meat without needing to kill an animal. So that's that's the most effective way to do it. Yeah, and we, we spoke quite a lot about uh, electric cars in our first chat, and also about Rivian. So, um, you know, they just IPO'd uh, last week, obviously, and they've done incredibly well just based on that future potential versus sales i guess and so yeah have you have you put a deposit down by the way on one of those for you uh, I, I i haven't but i i probably will i think they're <laughs> doing i think they're doing a really good job yeah i like the little thing that comes out where you can actually make a little table and and cook your cool. your, your food your plant-based food or your cell-based yeah. burgers <laughs> yeah that is cool <laughs> yeah um so i mean thinking about ipos now so i think potentially i'm not sure who'll be next but you know would you say uh, impossible if if they were gonna come out now and an ipo would you yourself consider um you know investing is it a good time now especially with you know when i think about other companies that have recently ipo'd um, mainly oatly who have sort of missed their target uh, in terms of revenue and their price now is, you know, half the, the, the valuation of when they launch, which, which happens, but I think they, it's been a difficult year for food in, in general with things like the cost of ingredients going up and, you know, labor sh- shortages, et cetera, that's making an impact. But would you say it's a good time for say impossible to IPO soon in this current climate? <laughs> I don't. I don't know about them in particular. Um, more, more generally, um, I think this is a, a great climate to go public. Um, I think you've got 
tens of millions of retail investors who want to participate in something that is meaningful. Um, people are not just investing in Rivian because they want to make money. People are investing in Rivian because it feels like it's connected to something larger. Um, and I think there's an opportunity to do that today. And I think food as much, potentially even more than electric cars, makes people feel like they're connected to something really meaningful. Um, and I think, um, you know, through through apps like Robinhood and others, uh, retail investors have a real opportunity to participate more. Uh, so I think it's I think it's a great time. Yeah. So I think really with um, you know pandemic, there's so-, so many more accounts being set up from these retail investors, and uh, I think the especially sort of G- Gen Zs as well, and and them also wanting to invest in more sustainable companies. Um, and so they, they, they're not just looking at the, you know, the short-term return, if you like. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So where does that put your plans for your IPO? Yeah. So we're no, no change from, um, where we've been at. We want to hit operating profitability first. And then, uh, when we do that, we think we'll be in a, a good position. So we haven't, we haven't hit that yet. Um, but, uh, once we hit that, I think we'll be looking to looking to go public. And I didn't, uh, I didn't co-found the company because I have some fixation on going public, but I think it'll be the, a smart next step, uh, as a way to, I mean, look at what Rivian did in terms of building their brand, you know, how many more, how many additional customers did they attract? Cause people heard about them for the first time through what, you know, just happened. So uh, if done well, it can be a really solid way to, to build a brand and, you know, make sure investors who support you in their early days are taken care of. Yeah, totally. Um, so do you have a projection of when that uh, operating profitability will happen or, or do you have a vision of when you would like it to happen by? Yeah, we, we, uh, we, we'd like it to happen within the next two years. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's fair enough. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So hopefully that will go well. Um, when you're looking at, I guess, your plans for the Just Egg product, I know you've done, you, you tend to do two iterations a year, right? On, on, on product to make it more creamy or texture, et cetera, flavor. What stage are you at now with the Just Egg products? And now that we're also seeing new entrants coming in, uh, competitors, um, like here we, we get Oggs and, and, and Cracked as a new brand. In, in, I know in India there's a brand called Evo, but it'd be great to get your thoughts on, on the competition and where you see the product is at now and is there stuff that you like to improve on that yourself personally? Yeah, so the goal ultimately is uh, to have an egg from a plant that's lower cost than an egg from a chicken, tastes a whole lot better, continues to be healthier as it is today, and continues to be a lot more sustainable, and build a brand around it where when people are thinking, I want to eat a better egg, they, they think of us. That's, that's what the point is. Um, so with the um, folded, we have two main formats, uh, a patty folded and then pouring it in a pan. For the pouring in a pan, we still want to make it creamier, uh, better fl- flavor profile, a little bit more of a delicate bite. For folded, not as many improvements. We're almost all the way there in terms of what our objectives are. We can continue to make it better, but it's it's uh, almost all the way there. Um, in terms of um, competitors, um, same kind of deal. I want more companies to, to come in this space, not, not less. Um, we uh, own about 99% of the market today in terms of eggs being sold from uh, from plants, and we just want to stay focused on what we're we're pretty decent at, which is the technology to make it better, uh, building out capacity so we can make sure to execute launches in places like Europe well, um, and build a brand where people feel really uh, connected to to what we're doing and when they think about you know having a healthier breakfast. Um, they think about us instead of the instead of the chicken egg. It is too freaking early, and Jay here is making scrambled eggs for Tommy. And it's got to happen fast, or it's going to be crayons for breakfast. Now, Jane doesn't give a damn that those eggs are made from plants, and she's creating a more just food system for Tommy's future and the planet. She's just happy she found something a one-year-old likes more than crayons and boogers. Mm-mm. Jane, these little kids is nasty. Just egg. Really good eggs. My man Wayne got real twisted last night. 
But respect goes out to Wayne. Instead of crying in a shower like he normally does, he got up and made himself a bomb fluffy egg sandwich. Now, does he care that these delicious eggs are made from plants and he's making a healthier future for humanity? He don't give a damn. This man is just after some tasty eggs. And if those eggs just happen to be good for the world, so be it. Just egg. Really good eggs. Okay, Kelly, I see you. After years of swiping right on human garbage, looks like you found the man of your dreams. But there's just one thing. He's vegan. But it's all good because those eggs are made from plants. Now, Kelly, are you eating just egg to join him in his mission to fix a cruel animal-based food system? No, you're eating those eggs because they're delicious. And I mean, come on, look at that dude. <laughs> I see you all smitten. Just egg, really good eggs. Yeah, we we actually spoke about Brown a little bit last time, and uh, you said something interesting about building a company, you know, the brand of the company without a product. So you know, what what does that mean? And um, if I was to ask you that now, like, how would you define what the just brand is how what would you say i'd say that the just uh, just brand stands for food that makes people feel good about what they're putting in their bodies um at first from a personal health level and then second from a planet health perspective so people want things that taste good that make them feel good like that's um very human um and uh that's that's what we that's what we stand for yeah very good um, so if there's people who are, you know, on a keto diet, for example, not that I would, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for doing a keto diet, but a lot of them would be consuming, you know, eggs in order to get their protein count. And obviously your version of your egg will have, uh, you know, less or zero cholesterol, I guess. Um, so it's a healthier alternative. But do you see it resonating with that dietary group you know in, in in you know versus you know us or more vegans you know yeah well the the vast majority of people that choose just egg they're not vegan or vegetarian so right. well over 90 percent of the people that buy it they're not vegan or vegetarian they're just trying to eat a little bit better and the keto group uh, is amongst them but it, it is um keto friendly at the heart of why it's healthier um you know, we've known for 50 years that um, putting dietary cholesterol in your body, putting saturated fat in your body makes it more likely for you to have cardiovascular disease. That's not, not some new paper that like just came out yesterday. Like that's just 50 years of science. A guy named Ansel Keys back in the day was the first one to really prove it out. Um, that's just as strong today as it was 50 years ago. The reason why Just Egg is healthier is it's free of dietary cholesterol and it has about 70% less saturated fat. So you are less likely to give yourself cardiovascular disease if you have our egg for breakfast. Um, and we, we're gonna be spending a lot more time just focusing on that pretty straightforward message. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's gonna be a lot better and healthier, obviously. Yeah, you, I mean, you can, you can believe that keto folks are, um, are completely evidence-based or you can disagree with their approach, but keto, non-keto, vegan, what, anywhere in between, most people can agree that ingesting saturated fat and dietary cholesterol increases the probability that one will get cardiovascular disease. You can be vegan and absolutely give yourself cardiovascular disease if you consume a lot of saturated fat. Um, and because saturated fat and dietary cholesterol uh, lead to uh, breakdowns of your endothelium lining uh, in your arteries, which ultimately leads to plaque buildup, which ultimately leads to plaque deposits in your arteries, which ultimately leads to a heart attack. Like again, it's like 50 years of science to have proven that, that basic sequence um and you know vegans can 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 get it too um you just have to watch out for saturated fat um and when you're not vegan you gotta watch out for dietary cholesterol too yeah totally yeah you definitely do need to keep an eye on that and obviously you know i would i would recommend a whole food plant-based diet if i could to, to everybody as you yeah, as, a, as as the best diet on the planet um no so question. yeah 
no no question yeah for sure um so yeah i'm always having these debates with my brother-in-law about him on his keto diet but uh, uh yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> trying trying hard <laughs> to convince him uh, otherwise. yeah you can you can eat a whole foods keto diet it's challenging but you still can do it yeah yeah exactly it's, it's definitely challenging and i think he just likes the easy option yeah yeah very good <laughs> Yeah. Um, so thinking about good meat again now, we also spoke last time about beef and pork would be next on your radar. Um, where are you with the development of those two products? As, as we know, you know, disrupting the, the beef industry is kind of vital. So, yeah, it'd be great to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah, uh, working on both. I'm planning to launch beef sometime before the end of next year. And then, uh, and then pork the following year. The thing about our launches right now, because it's so small scale, it's kind of like launch with a caveat because we're not talking wow. hundreds of millions of pounds here. Whereas when we launch a new version of Just Egg, it's in 33,000 points of distribution. So different levels of scale. Um, but yeah, beef beef next year and then, uh, and then pork after that. And then we'd like okay. to get into all sorts of stuff. Like, like what? Essentially, if if it's if people are eating animal flesh, we want to get into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anybody <laughs> yeah. eating animals, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, there's. I mean, I mean, Not, I think the, the next uh, obvious one would be: w- would you class fish in that mm-hmm. in that yeah, bucket? Duck, yeah. Okay. Yeah, duck, turkey also. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the market for pet food? Actually. Uh, we we didn't speak about that last time, but um, yeah. obviously you know they're they're contributing quite heavily towards the destruction of our planet by the by the amount that's being used. So is yeah. that a focus I, area potentially in the, in the future? Just because we're not focusing on it right now, because if we have so many things we focus on, we won't you know we won't focus on anything. Um, so it's not not something we're on right now. But uh, moving forward, we'd like to do it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's going to be interesting. I mean, obviously, you've got, you know, even um, if you look at like the the chicken market, but like you know, different animals would be consuming, not necessarily the the animals that they're actually eating today in their pet food. For example, a dog wouldn't be chasing down, or a cat wouldn't be chasing down in in their natural environment a cow, for example, or, or a chicken. Yep. Yep. Um, so it's kind of bizarre how the, the, you know, the world is feeding their pets at the moment as well. Extremely. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. So you have a dog you mentioned earlier. I do. Yeah, I have, I have a dog named Ellie. Uh, and what do you feed Ellie? Uh, Ellie, for the most part, will eat a, a, a whole foods plant-based diet, but I, I throw in animal protein every once and again when i'm uh when i'm rushing with her. yeah yeah i don't know if you, there's definitely companies i mean there was uh interviewed this company called because animals um mm-hmm. that's more on the on the cat food side that was looking at cell-based meat and yeah. obviously ryan uh with with uh, wild earth and there's a company here called omni pet so there's there's definitely innovations happening all over at the moment yeah. so there's definitely yeah good alternatives to choose from regardless of the age of the dog actually yeah i love to see that yeah yeah for sure me too i just yeah it's another space to look at right and in in everything that we're doing yeah agreed so yeah what else is next for you then uh josh what what else uh what have you what else have you got up your sleeves and is there anything else that you would like to discuss today you know, it's really, it's really it. Egg and meat for us. Uh, Make an egg uh, taste better than a chicken egg. Lower costs. Um, getting out to Europe, uh, expanding more in China and Korea. Continuing to to make North America happen on the meat side. Building real capacity so we can make tens of millions of pounds. That essentially is ninety nine percent of what I do every day. That sentence. Uh, so that that's really it. Yeah. Some time ago that you made an announcement, I think it was here in the UK with Nero, you know, the chain of coffee chains uh, Mm -hmm. to to launch your folded egg. Um, But I guess that didn't happen, right? Or has happened? Yeah, not in Europe yet. Um, They um, so it would only be applicable for locations in North America. Uh, Okay, right. And and Nero are quite big in North America, like chain wise. I'm not not exactly sure. 
Yeah, okay. I'm not sure how the doors, but uh, I they have a presence. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully, yeah, that relationship can continue uh, in Europe because they're quite a big chain here, obviously in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. We'd like that. Yeah. So then I can next time I go, I you know every time I go in, have you, have you got it yet? And as like, now I know why it's not there yet. So yeah, do let me know when it's available. <laughs> I will. I will. All right. Great. Thank you so much, Josh, for coming on the show. Great to catch yeah. up with you again. You bet. Um, Glad we're good. And hopefully catch up with you probably next year now, I would imagine. Yeah, sounds good. Look forward to it. All right, great. Thanks a lot. See ya. Speak to you. Bye. See ya.